Northwestern in the Pigskin Classic. 6-0 Wildcats in the third when Oklahoma's DeMond Parker takes a swing pass and runs 44 yards to the Northwestern 18. But on third and four, it's Justin Puente throwing to Keith Lazowski. He's on the other team. Story of the game. Two missed field goals and three turnovers doomed the Sooners. They go down 24 to nothing to Northwestern. To the Teams in recruiting, they built for this year. They've got a fine football team, great tailback. So uh, I think Penn State will win it. See, I think Penn State's going to win it also. But, I, you know, and I, I think along with Coach that their defense will be the best that they've been since they've gone into the Big Ten. And it'll be the first time, I think, that Penn State will be playing defense the way that, that they did a long time ago. And, and they can, you know they're going to run the ball. And, uh, and their quarterback even though he hasn't played much, I think he'll be good enough for them to win. We've got three ex-quarterbacks sitting here, and you, they've picked teams that are, have first-year starting quarterbacks, right. and Mike McCurry at Penn State, and Doug Johnson at Florida, and Scott Frost, who's far from a proven wait, quarterback wait, wait, wait. in Who Nebraska. picked Florida? Right here. Right there. Right there. I picked Who'd Florida. Who'd you pick? Penn State. No, 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 wait. He just did a great selling job on Florida, how great he was. <laughs> then he picked Penn State. I want to know who you picked. that in there? Penn State or Florida? Uh... Penn State. Okay. Well, you know what, guys? Chris brings up an interesting point of all the players who left. It was a great year, an exciting year for all of us to watch and be a part of college football. But some familiar names are gone. Danny, Troy isn't Troy Davis, Coy isn't Detmer, and then a couple other guys who had a significant game on January 1st. The Snake and the Master of the Pancake, too. Then the family, big brother Troy Davis and his two consecutive 2,000-plus yard seasons scampered off to the NFL. Now the workload falls on little brother Darren, who was second in the Big 12 in kick returns last season with a 24.1 yard return average. If Ohio State had the biggest shoes to fill, then Florida may have had the most. Gone are quarterback Danny Werfel and a pair of all Southeastern Conference receivers in Ike Hilliard and Riddell Anthony. Reloading the fun and gun, quarterback Doug Johnson, a minor league baseball player in the offseason, and wide receiver Jaquez Green, who has hit pay dirt 18 times already in his first two seasons in Gainesville. How do you fill in for those missing pieces? Well, let's go back to Notre Dame quarterback. Ron decides to stay. How do you think Ron Paulus' last year will be, considering the coaching change, as positive for him as everyone thinks it's going to be, Todd? Well, I think it has to be. I mean, I think he's, he's kind of talked it into that situation now that that's the reason he stayed and he's happy with the new coach, Coletto, and the new system, and he thinks he'll be able to, you know, finally have a good year. I, it's, it's, it's time for him to have a good year. And the thing that I saw in Ron Paulus that I didn't like over the last couple years is fundamentally and mechanically I thought he had just really gotten he had gone down sloppy sloppy footwork was sloppy and you know Kirk knows so much about throwing the ball accurately it isn't your arm it's your feet it's getting your feet in the right position and I whether it was the offense whether it was when the plays were called or whether it was just the fact that he didn't work on his mechanics day in and day out he, he just wasn't a very accurate thrower so I'm interested to see how he plays this year I'm going to stay at the University of Tennessee. Yeah! Third down. Manning goes straight ahead. He didn't go down, so he rolls out of the pocket. And throws it in the end zone for a touchdown. There's another one for the highlight reel. People laugh at these kind of things, but I enjoy Fridays, you know, like you, like you were back in high school and going to class and having the teachers and the fan and the students say, good luck in the game. running out on the field and hearing Rocky Top and you know it's, it's game time, it's coming around. And just those kind of things that uh, I just had such a positive experience here at Tennessee and to pass it up one more year uh, I think would have been a mistake. And I realize you do have to move on finally from college, but I want one more year to, to improve myself as a player and just to you know I, I finished my entire career here. Get it Touchdown! This is Manning rolling out the throw, dump the pass into the end zone, give him six. The minute I made my decision, I knew it was the right thing. I did, I, I did what I wanted to do. I'm going to have to live with the consequences. Well, who knows? He could have been. I, I love the kid as a player and as a person. I'm glad he's back. He's good for college football. You know, Warwick Dunn did the same thing last year at Florida State. And, and I agree. I think he can handle it. I think he's got a great head on his shoulders. And I think, you know, he's, he's a real driven kind of guy. He's, he's still, he may not be verbalizing a lot, but he's got to feel like he's got some things he wants to prove. You know, he kind of played in Danny Werfel's shadow, and Tennessee has played in Florida's shadow. So there's some things out there for him, not just the Heisman. I mean, just even within his conference and with it, what he wants to do as a team player that, that I think is, is going to drive him this year. They have him. Do they have enough? 
I think they do. I, the, where everybody's missing uh, the fact is they're, they're good on defense. But I, I think, I echo everybody's sentiments, I think he just wanted to accomplish more in college. We all enjoyed college. Lee enjoyed his six and a half years at Florida, <laughs> Florida State. But, way back uh, when? Way back yeah. when. But I, I think when, when you look at this Tennessee football team, the difference in this Tennessee team is I think they're going to be real good on defense. Now, whether they can go into Florida and win because that's their test. But uh, they had the number one rated defense no, statistically I, in the SEC last year and that Florida hung, what, 52 of them? But they're, they're better this year, and they're going down there, and there's a key ingredient missing in that Florida offense. And I like the setup of Peyton Manning taking his football team when you have an experienced quarterback and a good defense against a very good defense of Florida, but an inexperienced quarterback. So I like that little edge Tennessee has there. I'm not so sure. All this is true, but I'm not so sure he didn't make a mistake. And let me tell you why I think he did. I think he had perfect leverage at the end of this last year. He went to the Citrus Bowl, and I know everybody says beat Northwestern bad. Northwestern's not any good, but still, he was sensational. <laughs> Okay. He was not only that. Two time he's defending got, Big Ten. He's got three. Oh, he shut down. He's, off said, and running. Here we go. He's got three we took the summer off. Another year. Games. Who does he's got Big at UCLA, football? at Florida, and at Alabama, and all three of those teams can make him look bad. Now, that's my opinion. But decisions I think he had not perfect. based on leverage. See, it's no, been a just, long time since you were a college student. Then he's not thinking about leverage. He's doing I'm what he wants to do. The camaraderie of, the, of just being around this team. I think, we under, I think we all underestimate. Like you, were, you were making the point, Chris, I mean, how much he loves college football. I mean, I remember reading and hearing about him when he was a kid, you know, laying in his bed and listening to audio tapes of his dad playing for Ole Miss and then just the whole Southeastern Conference football lore. I mean, I think he is so into that that he, he just wanted that another year. And I think it's a hard for a lot of us to even grasp that in today's He walked down world. the street with me approaching the Illinois Stadium and reliving what happens on Saturday morning. Here's where you hear Rocky Top. Here's where a fan jumps out and you give a high five. And here's where the, yeah. the fans surround you. And here's where you go in the stadium. It, 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 nobody enjoys college football more than he does. There's one other dimension to Peyton Manning, though, that I think is critical, especially in the day and age of, of the big play for all the terrible things that athletes are supposed to be doing. Peyton Manning really loves kids. He goes to hospitals for the right reason. Not just to get publicity, not to win the Heisman, but because he loves kids. So, I mean, he really is a special young man, and I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, two of his peers who play the same position recognize that, and I hope people appreciate that rather than to speculate on his uh, well, one reasons. Thing, Coach, let me, let me ask you this. Go back in the Tennessee book just to remind ourselves of the score, because right? it's going to keep coming back to the Florida question, 31 nothing, then 62-37, and we know it's 35-29 last year, but it was a lot worse than that early on. We know that. If they lose to Florida, what does that do to Peyton Manning's season and his Heisman hopes? I don't think it does anything to Peyton Manning, the human being, and that's what matters. I mean, I think he's showing us something that we all ought to be looking for. I got a chance to talk to Peyton in February, and because he he sought me out as well as I mean, I wasn't on one of his top lists. You know, he talked to Michael Jordan and Tim Duncan and all these guys, but I was one of the guys that right he talked behind to. Jordan. I was I heard. somewhere below there <laughs> because I was in a similar situation. I had another year I could have gone back to Penn State and played. I had graduated. We had just won a national championship, and and I really it was a hard decision for me to make, whether to come out in the NFL or to go back to school. And uh, a lot of times I now look back on it and wish I would have stayed another year because I never had more fun playing than I did in college football. But the difference, and this is what I told Peyton, the biggest difference was we just won the national championship. And I felt that there was a release for me to go ahead and go because we had done that. And then that challenge, that biggest challenge that I had as a player, we had realized. But Peyton finished eighth right. in the Heisman voting last year. He's the only one from the top ten that comes yeah, back. Correct. When Chris finished. A lot of yards, and he's going to beat Ron Dane on November 22nd in State College and in that running back view. So it's going to be between a quarterback and a running back, and I think Curtis Enos has got the best chance. Well, I think it goes to the best player on the best team. So Peyton Manning, uh, I think he is the odds-on favorite. But I think Curtis Enos, I agree with Lee, I, I think they're going to have an 11-0 season. So I think he's going to be right there. Donovan McNabb, your guy. Thanks for uh, taking me Sarah off the hot seat. I, was gonna gonna get get off. I think they'll have a big year. And, and the long shot to win this thing is Chris Keldorf because North Carolina could have a great year. And uh, Chris Keldorf doesn't make any mistakes. And uh, if something happens to those first couple guys, and, uh, is he spectacular look out. Enough. He's a very efficient oh, Still to come, everything you ever wanted to know about the Washington Huskies and a report on the rest of the Pac-10. Is it do or die for John Robinson? What about Stanford? Stay tuned. The West is next. Less than they're due on the college gridiron. 
The last postseason consensus number one ranking for a Pac-10 team came all the way back in 1972 as USC claimed championship honors. The last preseason number one, Southern California again, this time in 1979. One of only four preseason number one rankings that the West has garnered since 1955. Last year started out in a very similar way. USC held the sixth spot in the coaches poll, while conference made Arizona State didn't garner enough support to make the coaches top 25, yet ended their Cinderella season just seven points from a possible national championship. This year is a different story. Washington, a top 25 team from a year ago, has garnered top five rankings in every preseason poll. They are also the consensus favorite to win the Pac-10. Did ASU's success of a season ago reopen some eyes to the West? Or are the Huskies just that good? You think? I think they play with an attitude, you know, because they're not one of the glamour teams from L.A. Yeah. And, you know, those, those infractions that were imposed by the Pac-10 on Washington, it really knocked them down for a little while. I think, I think there's a little bit of us against the rest of the conference attitude that they play with. And, and plus, they play really well at home. That's a tough place to go. Out of the Alliance Bowl. And I think there's going to be a lot of people watching that BYU-Washington game very early because if the Cougars can beat Washington in that game, there's a chance they could they could run the table and it could be a big issue again in the bowls this year. Tough place to play at BYU. We, we opened up there one year, but uh, their quarterback's not back. So I think that really hurts their football team this year early. The problem with the WAC is the fact that they got 16 teams mm -hmm. and only two of them, San Diego State and BYU, sound like they can play football. The perception is they can't play football in the WAC. That's... They're very good football teams, but BYU and San Diego State are the only two teams in that league you've heard about. As well, Colorado State's been well, in some bowl. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, watch out for Colorado State, State this year, right? I think Colorado State's got a chance to, to move into a, a dimension that they haven't been before. And you hadn't said anything to upset the WAC people yet. No. I just did. No, no. no, 14 no. Of the 16. No, you, you backed off. You said they're really good, but they're perceived. You not like to be well liked? <laughs> no, I just, I just go on the facts. <laughs> but outside of well, BYU. the conference is diluted. Let's be honest. There are some, there are some programs in that conference that are not big time football programs. They do not take football seriously at the bottom of that conference. It's like a basketball conference that expands and the, the power rating drops out because it's diluted. You're an alliance. Be you're an alliance bull. You have North Carolina 12 and 0. You have BYU 12 and 0. Who who would you take? Carolina. They will have beaten without, Florida without State without any hesitation. Sure. Right. I mean, that's, that's, not the bottom, fair, that's the that, bottom line. That's, that's the way it all BYU is always going to have to play tough people non-conference and beat them, which they did not do last year when they were hammered by Washington. They beat Washington, they're in the alliance. Yeah. But a Division One A school that wins 14 games ought to be in the alliance. The yeah. only problem I had with that last year is, is I don't mind you not inviting them to an alliance bowl, but don't vote them number six in the country. If you want to say they don't play a tougher schedule and they got beat, but I think as a team that's lurking back there, they don't play Penn State this year. They do have a tough schedule, but their last two games out last year, their defense held. Ron Dane to under 70 yards. They held Byron Hansbard to under 70 yards in the bowl game, and they bring a lot of those guys back. They can play defense out excuse, there. Excuse it's just me. the road game. You know, we, we have year history, Ohio Stadium is hosting football under the lights as this first annual State Farm Eddie Robinson Football Classic benefiting the Black Coaches Association. Welcome to Ohio Stadium and our very first maiden voyage of college football for 97. Here in Ohio, Dave Barnett and Todd Blackledge and compared to Eddie Robinson, John Cooper, a mere coaching teenager of 60, but he found a way to get the detractors off his back. You have to win a Rose Bowl to do that here, but a lot of those guys, especially on defense, are up in the NFL now. Yeah, everybody talks about Orlando Pace, and you're never going to replace a player like Pace, but the real losses on this team are going to be felt on defense. Nine new faces in the starting lineup tonight. However, there will be one familiar face, middle linebacker Andy Katzenmoyer returns. Now, this guy lived up to his billing and more as a true freshman last year. This year, he'll be counted on to not only make plays, but also to provide leadership. From John Cooper yesterday, he says, facing Dana Dimmel in his coaching debut, he has never played a team that he knows less about than Wyoming tonight. Well, none of the coaches at Ohio State know what to expect. Will they run Kansas State stuff, Wyoming stuff, Memphis stuff? If there is an advantage that Wyoming has, it's this. But with Dana Dimmel, he's a young guy. He comes in here with great enthusiasm and confidence, and he sold his team on two things. First of all, he said, guys, this is not the same Ohio State team that won 11 games last year and finished number two. And secondly, if it's still 0-0 10 minutes into the game, the game turns in our favor. That's a real tall order with all the skill guys in red jerseys. And one reason the Cowboys didn't hesitate to accept this bid to play 
at Ohio State the first game of the year. This is their bowl game, they figured, that they didn't get for going 10-2 and two last year. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing all the new Buckeye faces. The same situations like that in this ball game. They can't have these third and long situations. Silcox out of the shotgun as all day, but overthrows Montgomery. A lot of yards last year. You don't do that if you're happy. And Keller on a cutback. Great job of seeing where the open. And Leaf chugging downfield. Says that's what I'm talking about. 37-21 <laughs> Cougars. More from Hicks. UCLA down 10 early fourth quarter. Hicks shows the speed. Gets to the corner. Fourth touchdown on the day. The Bruins down by only a field goal. Mike Price Lurie, third and goal for the Bruins. McNown to Jermaine Lewis. Does he get in? It kind of looked like it, but they spot him short, and this would prove to be a critical call. Hicks had to leave the game. Wasn't in there. So Toledo goes to Lewis in a deep handoff and shades of the Palouse posse of a few years ago. They allow 34 points. But right there, they make the defensive play of the game on the goal line to preserve a very important victory for their bowl in the Pacific Division, hosting Nevada out of the Big West. And that's Damon Washington, who had a big game, busted in from one yard out. Nevada, in third and goal. Chris Lemon stopped by Eric Olson for a five-yard loss. Colorado State's defense played well, and Nevada helped the cause with special teams miscues like that. Meanwhile, the Ram offense balanced, dangerous. Moses Moreno unloads the 40-yard pass to Paul Turner, and Colorado State opens in impressive fashion. They were just one spot out of the top 20. That's Nathan Simmons, the coach's son, playing because the starter is suspended. And look at the effort. Gets the ball across the goal line from 31 yards, ties the game at seven. Still tied in the fourth quarter. Todd Bandauer picked off by Kevin Williams, gets it down to the three. Oki State would punch it in, and Coach Simmons, with all those guys suspended, a total of 10 players, still goes on the road and wins it. Marcus Nash comes down with it in the corner. 17-3 balls. More of the same in the third. Manning, Nash, is one of the groomsmen in Marcus's wedding over the summer. There's a little gift right there. 31-3 Tennessee, and then more speed. Andy McCullough on the crossing pattern. McCullough takes it to the house. Manning ties a school record with five touchdown passes. And Texas Tech gets a couple of touchdowns late on the volunteer backups on defense. And the final is 52 to 17. Afterwards, Adrian Karsten. Yards, I think, is picking up right where you left off. It's a good way to start off the season. We're, um, a little slow starting off, kind of sluggish for an opening game, which is pretty normal, though. But we got on track. The offense got rolling. Of course, the defense had us in great field position all game. You add to all those touchdowns and yardage four uh, stitches in your chin. How are you feeling? That's right. You know, uh, <laughs> um, college football season's here. Let you know. You got a little bump on the chin, but that's part of the game. I'll be ready to go next week. The slow start in the first half. Were you feeling the pressure, some of your receivers? Well, not really. You know, that's pretty typical for first games. We were just trying to get our timing down, get on track a little bit. Texas Tech does a lot of different things defensively, which took a lot of adjustments on our part, but it was a good job by the offense of making those adjustments and getting on track finally. Very opera. Kentucky against Louisville. Cardinals had won the last two games in this series, and Tim Couch the quarterback who gets to throw a lot under the new system. A mummy flips it off under pressure to Anthony White and finds his way to the end zone. 23-yarder, two touchdowns for White. More of Couch in the second half. Already a four-point lead when Couch finds Keo Sanford. And Keo worms his way to the end zone. 80 yards, and Kentucky wins it 38-24. to That's the most points a Wildcat team has scored. Since 1988, it ends college football's national title next Saturday afternoon. And, and guess what? Well, you can see all the action right here on Channel 6. It's against Pittsburgh, the University of. They don't want to be called Pitt anymore. It's a 3.30 kickoff here on Channel 6. Meanwhile, the team right behind Penn State in the AP he national rankings, that's motion. Florida. And that's the Mr. Spurrier there tonight in the second-ranked Gators. Opened their season with a 21-6 win over Southern Mississippi. Florida quarterback Doug Johnson, yeah, threw a couple of touchdowns and ran for another. And our first big upset of the college football season takes us to the Carrier Dome. 13th-ranked Q, hosting NC State. Game tied at 24, and Donovan McNabb finds a tight end to make it 31-24. Orange men. NC State then matches the touchdown effort. Tremaine Stevens with the one-yard run. Big difference here, though. The Wolfpack, they gamble. They go for the two-point conversion. And guess what? Jamie Barnett to Terry Holt. 32-31 State in the upset. Checking some of today's other top 25 action. Uh, Peyton Manning gets off on the right. 
and keep it on the ground. Edgar and James breaks it out to the right, 23 yards for the score. Miami up 7-0. Miami's next drive, first and goal. James again, second touchdown. He'd later tack on another. He'd rush for 120 yards. 3.45 left in the game. Miami up 38-15 and adding insult to the old injury. Dwayne Starks breaks free of defenders, and he would go all the way. 85 yards through traffic for the touchdown, and Miami wins 45-40. Team. No what about Edgar and James filling in for the top tailback, the injured Daryl McMillan? Three times, 120 yards, three times he scored. The Hurricanes victimized the NCAA's worst team against the rush last season. They had allowed an SPN. Al Clark making his first start and calling his own number. 80-yard touchdown run for the quarterback. Tech up 34-7. Rutgers coach Terry Shea's team would struggle in its debut. Rutgers on their next possession. Ball is fumbled. Pearson Prelau with the recovery takes it in for a 43-yard touchdown return. The Hokie defense credited with two scores in the afternoon. Hokies up 42-7. They win 59-19. Hokies gained 501 yards, got six turnovers, and their largest opening day win since a 40-zip win over Roanoke back in 1912. It's even worse for Rutgers. It's their worst opening day setback at home ever and worst overall since 1896. When they lost 40. I tackle six. They just wanted to loosen that up a little bit and give some pressure or give some uh, confidence rather than McQuarrie. Although Joe Paterno, we talked to him all week, he's got a lot of confidence in Mike McQuarrie, although this is his first start. Aaron Harris, Curtis Enos in the backfield out of the eye. Joe Vicious in motion to the near side on third and six. McQuarrie complete to Harris. He's got a first down and more. Still on his feet. Inside the 30 yard line, down to the 20-yard line. A 29-yard gain on third and six. And you get a look at what Aaron Harris can do with the football after he catches it. Not fancy, but it is effective. It's a basic play out of the eye play action. Now watch this. McQuarrie just sets. There's his pullback. Now Harris, I love this comment he made this week. He says, hey, if I'm not on the ground, I might as well keep going. Watch how many tackles he breaks. One, two, spins away from this one. Still on his feet. You got a guy coming behind who's trying to just get the football, and then finally the safety takes him down at the 20. First down at the 21. Curtis Enos drives the left side. Not much more. Harris and Enos in the backfield. Jason slowed by the way the injured knee and not ready to go today. Enos in motion on second and 11. Here comes Harris straight up the middle. He's got a lot of room. Down to the 10 yard line, close to a first down, maybe just short. Runs a 4-5 last year, but this is his first field goal try of his career. Nastasi the holder. And he splits the uprights. So a 24-yard field goal from Travis Forney, the sophomore out of Lock Haven, Pennsylvania. Joe Paterno having a word with Curtis Enos on the sidelines. He's got three on the board right now. Playing three here, number 24. Gonzalez thinks he has a receiver coming in on the post, but watch. There's the tip ball. There's Lee playing three back in his safety position, and now he's just looking for some blocks. Sean Lee, as you mentioned, is only 5'7". He's out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Jr. This defense is balanced, it's talented, and if it plays aggressively like it has been, it's hard to beat consistently. So, the straight drop. Penn State down again. Putting down inside the five, down to the goal line at the one. Cuncho Brown, excuse me, the tight end. The junior out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And a big target. Behind the linebackers, now they're ready to score. A lot of weapons on this Penn State offense. From the one, Enos powers his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Penn State. And they made it look easy. Ago, when West, after he was a sophomore in 94, was the Big East Offensive Player of the Year. We will see West today, though, along with Hank Boutique. They're loaded at running back. Schulter's the intended receiver, but that pass sailed very wide out of bounds. This is the third. Beat them 72 to nothing. Ninth play of the drive. Third and eight. A big play here for Pittsburgh. Complete. Inside the 20 and a first down. They'll move the chain. Terry, I'm going to tell you right now, this kid has a gun. Gonzalez has a gun. He's finding his rhythm now. He looks more confident. And out. Still up and finally down to the 32-yard line. 
second and six for the Nittany Lions. McQuarrie, straight drop, a lot of time. Has a receiver at midfield and to the 47-yard line. That's Jura Vicious. Mike McQuarrie, after a bit of a shaky first series, has certainly settled down and right now driving the Nittany Lions down the field. Second down, McQuarrie to the air. Jura Vicious, incomplete. Trey Creighton with good. Former defensive lineman. Here's McQuarrie over the middle, complete. Pettigrew loses the football. And it's on the ground at the 28-yard line. Penn State looked gets like it Harris got it. Pettigrew got it. All of a sudden, he feels the middle collapse on him a little bit. His vision shows the right side wide open. Just get to the sidelines. Don't take a hit. Get out of bounds. Does take a little bit of a hit here, but it's more of a push. Great play by the fifth-year senior. Pettigrew in now for Jura Vicious in motion to the near side. Fighting his way to the 35-yard line, but a yard and a rear block. Play action again for McCleary. Jura Vicious with the catch, and he was popped from both angles as soon as he caught the ball. So it's first down, ball rest on the 15-yard line. Harris, the fullback, may have left. Second and eight now, and Jura Vicious comes to the near side. Here come the Panthers on the blitz. Penn State picks it up. Schioli, the intended receiver, contact, no flag. So third and eight now. Harris, the one set back. McQuarrie gets hit as he throws. Joe Vicious to the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown pass of 14 yards from McQuarrie. Just as he threw the football to Joe Juravicious, his favorite wide receiver. He had four touchdown catches a year ago. The leading receiver for this Nittany Lion team. First thing right there, they pick up the blitz. Now watch this. They're isolated on Brutes. It's number 34, the linebacker. That is absolutely no contest for Juravicious. He's just one by the next one. Number one, they picked up the blitz. Number two, they had Jura Vicious, a wide receiver and a big one, locked on to a linebacker that he can out one. Pushing the passer. The blitz from Collins picked up over the middle. Poteet with the catch at the 26, but he's not near the first down. Jason Collins on the coverage, but it was his brother Aaron who is right on top of Pete Gonzalez. That moment takes us back to 1980 with Penn State trailing Pitt quarterback Todd Blackledge trying to bring him back. I called a play to, to kill the clock to throw the ball out of bounds on the sideline and I got caught in the middle and Carlton Williamson intercepted it on the sideline and I had to go over there and make a tackle on the Pitt sideline and uh, it was just the most miserable feeling I ever had. 14-9 is how it would end but Blackledge would get his revenge. We'll see that a little later. It's going to be tough talking to Todd after this one. Just showing that. But it, trust me, folks, he does get his revenge. Chuck Brown on the tackle. Curtis Enos ahead for about one yard. As we have 320 and counting left until halftime. Well, you think of the names, though, that have played in this series. And uh, the Dan Marinos, the Q Greens, the, the Todd Blackledges, the Franco Harris's. McCleary to throw on second down. Joe Vicious with the first down. Another big catch. Out to the 45, maybe the 46-yard line. And let's check in and get a Burger King update from John Saunders in New York. John? All right, Terry, thanks a lot. Tennessee and UCLA and Tennessee's offense not moving that well, at least not getting the ball into the end zone enough. But 25 yards here, Jermaine Copeland with Peyton Manning. Two-point conversion is good. That's your Burger King update. By the way, guys, my partner's not too happy with you guys right now. Hey, John, we'll make it up to him. We'll tell show him, the other side of the story. Tell him to keep watching. Uh, our producer, Mark Lewis, said we have to show the good side of Todd Blackledge. Income between his hands. There's no way he can make the catch. Had he turned his head quicker, he might have had to pick. Very 8 for 15 so far. He goes to the ground this time with Enos. Look at how strong 
Curtis Anderson to the 42-yard line and knocked out of bounds. He's got a nitty one. So it is third and almost 10 now. Third and a long nine. Under pressure, Gonzalez dumped incomplete. Hope for the intended receiver again, but back in the backfield. Curtis Enos split to the near side. Three receivers set. Cleary with the straight drop. Over the middle, clock complete up to the 45-yard line. That's the big 10 end, Concho Brown. That stops the clock with 47 seconds left while they move the chains. So right away, McQuarrie already yelling out the play, telling them what he wants, getting them to the line. That's a big target in Brown and a heck of a basketball player in high school. He runs well. McQuarrie doubling halftime 97. John Saunders, Todd Blackledge. And all the scores and highlights from a busy day in college football around the country. Well, you've got a field goal kicker, Travis Porty, who's playing his, kicking in his first game, really, where he's the kicker. Mm -hmm. In high school, he had a record of 48 yards, so he only get down to at least the 40 yard line. Well, Mitchell in for Enos now in a big run. He has a Penn State first down. So the 40th really becoming a household name with sports fans, rushing for over 240 yards in that game. He becomes a focal point here as well. The big target, obviously, is pure vicious, but also Enos in the flats. Play action, the career with time, throws, complete the drill, vicious remainder. Down to the 20 yard line. A big gain of first down will stop the clock. James Moon still using the clock effectively. 100 yards already. He wouldn't go now with 12 seconds. He's got to get it. He's got plenty of time for at least another play. Yeah, maybe two. Also has one timeout left, so. So Drew Vicious in. Where does Enos back in along with Aaron Harris in the backfield? Red Schioli is in at tight end, so it's not a three receiver set for Joe Paterno. Play action from McCurry. Nobody open, and he almost threw that one into the hands of a pit defender. Today, a 29 yard attempt. He's got a strong leg. Up, and no doubt about it. So he has hit from 24 yards and now 29 yards. Two for two on the season, two for two for his career. What a weapon that will be. There are very few weaknesses in this Penn State football team, although Joe Paterno will tell you, hey, we're still very, very young. A lot of things still are uncertain. Well, he's got America's top mechanics, people who know use Valvoline. From our New York studios, John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. Traveling halftime 97, John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. When you talk about the North Carolina Tar Heels and Mac Brown, the head coach, they just want to play football. They've read about how great they are, and today they got a chance to find out if they are as good as everyone says they are. Of course, they have two pretty good quarterbacks, Oscar Davenport and Chris Keldorf. Keldorf got the start. He hooks up with Algie Crumpler, 27 yards, but Keldorf also had three interceptions. Not a great day. But he does come up with the victory, 23-6 over Indiana. Well, when your offense is struggling, count on that defense. 12 of 14 opponents North Carolina has held to under 14 points. That makes it easy to play offense. Matt Sherman had three touchdown passes as Iowa blows out Northern Iowa, 66-0. Appalachian State down by Clemson. All this one closer than a lot of people might have thought. Yeah, Clemson had more than they wanted from Appalachian State, but the new West Coast offense, pretty successful. Nalon Green, 250 yards and a couple touchdowns. They still run the ball, though. Raymond Priester, career leader in rushing, 138 yards today. A couple of struggling teams in the Big East, Boston College and Temple. Stacy Mack, though, this is a great run. Gets hit there, then runs out of it and takes it in for the touchdown. Temple wins this game for Ron Dickerson, just his second victory in the Big East. Yeah, the Owls 2-33 and 33 in the Big East. Good day on the, on the ground today. 221 total yards rushing the football. Now, Kentucky led throughout much of this game, but Mississippi State comes back and wins it 35-27, to 27, although Tim Couch, another terrific day for Kentucky. You can see 39-61, of 61, more school record for him, but until Kentucky can run the football a little better, it's going to be tough to win football games in the SEC. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Budweiser, beach offense, just unleashes this ball. Here's a native of State College. Now watch this. See if there's a little push here. Whoop. Just a little hand shove in the back. But the ball was underthrown. His receiver got to a big completion for Penn State to move. Uh, I'm pulling for him. Bill speaking about a game in high school in which they lost. And uh, he's still like the quarterback. And there's a pass from McQuarrie down to Shoppy Fields. Another big reception for Fields inside the 15 to about the 13-yard line. Gain of 23. Joe says he's pulling for 
doesn't have to pull too hard because I think McQuarrie's found the range now. He's gone to the big guy, Jura Vicious. Now he's going to Fields, the speed guy, runs 4 4 40. And I guarantee you, Dad sitting in the stands loves that. <laughs> That's my boy, guys. That's my boy. Jeff looks like he can get out there and play a little bit. Maybe a line. Curtis Enos powers his way down to the three. And it looks like lines. Chris Everly in, in the slot, now in motion. Enos looking for his hole. He found it and found the end zone. Four yard run from Enos. Give it to him since it's a, a popularity contest, and besides that, he deserves it. I'm doing a lot better than Northwestern right now, facing Wake Forest. They lost to him last year, and again on the road. Brian Kuklik, 37 yards to Desmond Clark, and 20 to 10. Wake Forest looking to make it two straight years over Northwestern, ranked number 24 this week. Terry. John, it's time to quit playing them down there. If you're Northwestern, Gary Barnett. The upset again. Billy West with a carry. It's going backwards. Bartadol was there. You mentioned that you're right here with the university. You think of Larry and Matt Sui right away. On third and 13 to the air. Knocked down by DJ Deacons. Jurevicius was down there. Well covered. Movement mirrors a little bit, but it's easy to read. They're in zone defenses. And for Penn State, they're just picking up. Pat Pigeon's punt. In the end zone, a couple of Penn State played into the throws and uh, really lost his rhythm. So this is a good move. 16-yard gain. Billy West on first down, and they move the chains. First and ten from the 36. Here comes West again. Not this time. Tripped up. And you can't expect much from your defense when it's on the field in the entire quarter. Second and 11, one of the throw, the left-hander flushed out, runs straight up the middle, has some room, and is hit at the Penn State, obviously. Yeah, and again, you look at the rushing yards, and about 40 of those just came in the last series. They have not recorded Penn State. Completion there may have done it. Shafi Fields, the intended receiver. Trey Creighton with good coverage, but Todd Blackledge. See, we we show, showed the interception earlier against Pittsburgh in 1980. Todd Blackledge with the all-time record for a single game in terms of passing 358 yards against Miami in 81. McQuarrie with 341 right now starting the fourth quarter. A lot of people are saying, I wonder why they're still passing deep like that when they're up by 31. I don't believe Joe Paterno is a guy to run up scores, but I don't think he's going to come out of his game plan. I know he won't run up scores, but I've been on some lopsided games against him, and that's because he's standing with this. This works for him, his game plan. Joe Nastasi to catch. Mike McQuarrie, more yards than any Penn State quarterback has ever thrown for in a single game. 366. Penn State's going to go for it, even being up 31. Our statistician, John Madden, says, hey, Will Harris, give him the film. Give him the video. Call off the dogs. Not yet. Everly in motion. Mitchell, first down for the 28. They'll move the chains. Well, the crowd stopped this thing. And there goes Mike McQuarrie, his first start, a school record in terms of passing. Thompson, complete at the 25-yard line. Rozeski, they upsetting number one hit, 48-14. A lot of the throw to the end zone. It's a jump ball incomplete, broken up by Chris Alston. They get into the end zone. Wide over with time. Oh. Touchdown! What a strike. Shao Angel with the catch. The freshman out of Sacramento. Fourth and goal at the 19. College football behind only Michigan and Tennessee. This place is special. There's no question. They had 62,000 plus for the spring game, <laughs> the blue white game this past spring in this state. All time wins, number one active coach. Everything right early on had a couple of breakdowns late. He's not going to be happy about that, or he might be. It gives him a lot of things to work on.
Well, Mike McQuarrie, a record-setting day as a quarterback here at Penn State. More yards than any Nittany Lion quarterback has thrown for in a game. 366 yards. And Joe Paterno now 1-0 on the 97 season. The first step towards what they hope uh, will be a national championship. Great performance by McQuarrie, too. Don't forget, 8 o'clock Eastern time, Florida State taking on USC from the L.A. Coliseum. For Lewis Johnson and Tim Brandt, I'm Terry Gannon. Hope you enjoyed it. So long from State College, Pennsylvania. They lost anyway, mostly because they coughed up the football three times and got lost while trying to cover thundering herd stud wideout Randy Moss. Moss had one of those special games at West Point today. First quarter on a third and six on their own ten. Chad Pennington and Moss on the screen. Moss would do the rest. Hurdles that one tackler. Step arms another. See you later. 90-yard touchdown pass. 17th straight game for Moss with a touchdown. And Pennington also gets credit for 90 yards. Even though it was all Moss on that play. Third quarter. Pennington to Moss again. Was it a 20-yard pass? And how long's the run? 50 yards? All in all. 79-yard touchdown catch. 21-12 Marshall. Later in the third. Same score. Army's Joe Hewitt. Fumbles the football. Marshall's Ricky Hall picks it up. And he would run 43 yards for the score. Marshall goes on to win 35 to 25. Five catches, 186 yards for Randy Moss. Had a wing keying on anyhow. He blitzes 63 yards. Hayden Fry's Hawkeyes are in total command. Early in the second quarter, it's 10 0. Then they start piling it on. This time, they just go straight to Banks, and he goes straight around Northern Iowa. A 40-yard score. So those two plays come at 103 yards on their own. He had 203 on the day, scored three touchdowns. The Panthers then fumbled the ensuing kickoff. Matt Sherman goes to Tim Dwight all alone in the end zone. They score twice in 24 seconds, shut him out 66 to nothing. As the Washington Huskies go on to take this one by a final of 42 to 20. She he does him in again with Colorado State. Sean Hessler looking good. Running the option play. Takes the ball all the way down to the one yard line. Richard Troutman would score on a one yard TD run and it's 7-0 buffs. Colorado State QB Moses Marino fakes then goes deep to Darren Hall. A beautiful catch. 41 yard TD. That puts the Rams up Oh, at 132 yards receiving of the game. Second quarter, Marino back to pass. This time, picked off. Shotty Barnes returns this one, 26 yards, and that knocks the game at 14. In the third quarter, Sean Hessler and Phil Savoy, they already have one touchdown. They hook up again. A 43-yard TD. Savoy had five catches for 73 yards and two scores as Colorado rallies and pulls this one out. Justin Vetter to Bobby Shaw, a 50-yard strike. Shaw had 11 receptions for over 200 yards. Cal Romps, 35 to 3, no offense for the Cougars. BC Temple, this is a great one. Temple's El Marco Jackson takes the kickoff. Watch a bus tackles. Right up the gut, he just starts churning the legs and says, try and stop me. 95 yards later, Temple pulled it out 28-21 to snap an 11 game losing streak. Beats BC, Kentucky and Mississippi State. Yard field goal attempt blocked by Oklahoma. Sooners win it 36-34. How about App State in Death Valley to take on Clemson? Raymond Priester, 38-yard touchdown run. He had 138 in the day. Tigers win it 23-12. Now, staying in the ACC, Northwestern at Wake Forest. Wake Forest, Brian Kulik, 37-yard touchdown pass to Desmond Clark. Second year in a row that Wake has knocked off a ranked Wildcat team at home, 27-20 Demon Deeks. San Jose State at Sanford, fourth quarter. San Jose State's Brian Vi intercepted by John Haskins, returns it 21 yards, clinching TD for the Trees. Cardinal wins it 28-12. Northern Iowa, first of three touchdowns for him. Hook em horns. This one goes 74 yards. See ya. We want to be ya. 155 yards on the night. 48-14. Horns. Of all the national teams of USC. Season of turmoil and a lackluster first half on Saturday. It was the same old Florida State in crunch time against USC. Dee Feaster's four yard run in the fourth quarter gave the Seminoles a 14 7 win over the Trojans. Meanwhile, four different Florida QBs threw TD passes, and starter Doug Johnson had seven in the first half alone. The number two Gators annihilated Central Michigan 82 to 6. That's the most points for Florida since 1913. A big scare for Bob Davey in Notre Dame on Saturday as Georgia Tech stormed back from an early deficit to take a 13-10 fourth quarter lead. 
Ron Palace was picked off twice, but Notre Dame's Audrey Denson scored from one yard out with just over two and a half minutes left to give the Irish a 17-13 win. Number three, Tennessee's Peyton Manning threw for 341 yards and two TDs as the ball jumped out to a 24-0 lead over UCLA, but the Bruins came back on QB Cade McCown's 400 yards passing. It's 30-24 when McCown overthrows Eric Scott on fourth and three at the Tennessee 20. That seals it. Balls over the Bruins, 30-24. Elsewhere in the top 25, Curtis Enos had two TDs as number one Penn State rolled over in-state rival Pittsburgh. Number four, Washington reeled off 35 unanswered points to blow out BYU. The Tar Heels look sluggish in their win over Indiana. Two third-quarter interceptions helped Colorado 